So the next question we have to tackle is understanding how this genetic shift is actually possible. In other words, what is going on at the molecular scale in these organisms' cells that are allowing for this shift to take place? One important vocabulary word that we need to understand for this is gene. Genes are instructions for making a protein molecule. Here's a diagram that shows genes. Genes are located on chromosomes. There are one, two, three sets of chromosomes in our diagram. And what chromosomes are, are tightly wound bundles of DNA, kind of like a bundle of yarn, all balled up. There are two copies of each gene, one on each chromosome of the pair. And when an organism reproduces sexually, it gives the offspring one of each of its chromosomes and therefore one copy of each gene. Another way of saying that is that parent, parents pass on one copy of each gene to their offspring. Another vocabulary word we need to be aware of is protein molecule. A protein molecule is a type of large molecule that performs important functions inside of organisms. In science, of course, when we can't actually have our hands on something that's so microscopic, like chromosomes or like protein molecules, we love to create models, as you might be aware of. So in our diagram here, these are two different models of protein molecules. This first one is called a ribbon diagram, and the second one is called a space filling model. Both show the structure of a protein. These words will help us as we read a little bit more about what is going on in terms of genetics in organisms. The article we are going to read today that will help us with this understanding is called glowing jellies. Imagine splashing in a calm ocean cove at night. As you splash, you notice green flashes in the water, glowing jellies. These are called crystal jellies. They can't sting humans, so you can swim and watch them glow green as you bump into them. Where does this trait for being able to glow come from? In 1992, some scientists decided to find out. They examined the cells of crystal jellies and discovered the glow comes from a protein. They, have, they gave the protein the name green fluorescent protein, or GFP for short. To find out how these jellies make GFP, scientists investigated the jelly's genes. So I'm seeing here that this glowing property comes from a protein. So this makes me think about how proteins allow for traits, traits like glowing to be expressed. Let's move on. A gene is instructions for an organism's cells to make a particular protein. Scientists were able to find the gene that gave the jelly cells instructions to make the GFP protein. If a jelly has the GFP gene, its cells can make green fluorescent protein. If its cells make green fluorescent protein, the jelly can glow. The gene leads to the protein, which leads to the trait. That is a really important point. I'm going to make sure that I underline that. The gene leads to the protein, which leads to the trait. I also think I might want to create a flow chart to be able to demonstrate um, the connection between these three items. So we have genes. that provide instructions for proteins.
that are then able to be expressed as traits. Let's move forward with our reading now. How does a jelly get the gene for glowing? When a pair of adult jellies reproduce, each one passes down genes to the offspring. Genes are found in chromosomes, and chromosomes come in pairs. An organism has two copies of any given gene because there is one copy on each chromosome in a pair. However, the two copies of any particular gene can be the same version or different versions. These different versions of a gene are called alleles. When jellies reproduce sexually, each parent passes down one of each of their chromosomes with their genes on it to the offspring. That's an important point, and we'll pop back over in a second to our diagram to demonstrate this as well. So each parent passes down one of each of their chromosomes with their genes on it to the offspring. Now, humans have 46 chromosomes, which means that 23 of our chromosomes come from our biological mother and 23 of our chromosomes come from our biological father. If at least one of the adult jellies has the version of the gene that is instructions for GFP, then the gene could be passed down to the offspring. Offspring with the gene will have cells that produce GFP, so they will glow also. Moving back to our diagram, from our definition of gene, as well as on this page, we can see here there are different versions that the genes can be. These are different versions. We can see that from the different colors that are presented in these diagrams. Those different gene versions are called alleles. And we can also see, like we demonstrated before, that each set of chromosomes, in each set of chromosomes, one of those chromosomes comes from the biological mother and one comes from the biological father. Therefore, each chromosome carries one of those genes. So one of the genes in this case comes from the biological mother and one comes from the biological father. Let's move forward with some reflection questions as well. So let's reflect on what we've learned today. First, where do genes that determine an individual's traits come from? A, an individual can be born with any genes since genes are random. B, individuals grow genes specific to their environment. Or C, parents pass their genes down to their offspring. Or D, parents choose which genes their offspring have when each individual is born. Pause the video and respond to this question with A, B, C, or D based on what we learned in this lesson. That's right, it's C. Parents pass their genes down to their offspring. Here's another question for you. How do genes determine an individual's traits? A. Genes directly lead to traits. B. Genes are random and don't lead to traits. C. Genes give organisms the ability to change their traits. Or D. Genes are instructions for making protein molecules and protein molecules determine traits. Turn and talk to someone near you and respond to this question with A, B, C, or D. That's right, it's D. Genes are instructions for making protein molecules. 
and protein molecules determine traits. Let's do one more question to reflect on our learning for today. How can an individual be born with an adaptive trait? A. The individual can choose to change the adaptive trait when they want to. B. The parents had genes for the adaptive trait, which they passed down to the individual. C. The individual can choose to have an adaptive trait at birth. Or D. The parents can choose for the offspring to have genes for the adaptive trait. Write your response down or turn to someone near you and respond to this question with A, B, C, or D based on our lesson today. That's right, it's B. Parents had genes for the adaptive trait which they passed down to the individual. Great job today, and I will see you for chapter two, lesson two, next.